So, Skeletal Swarming is a card I've been meaning to play since uh, the set was released, but we've had a lot of other submissions and stuff, so I've had, uh, had to wait to get around to it. But we're finally, we're finally here today. We're going on a field trip to find a swarm of skeletons. So we've got kind of this like small creature package that like blocks the early game and also enables Deadly Dispute as a way to generate some card advantage. And then we've got some interaction in Soul Shatter, Hagra Mauling, and Binding of the Old Gods. And at the top end of our curve, in addition to Skeletal Swarming, we've got some Planeswalkers as ways to win the game, as well as some reasonable sweeper effects. We're leveraging Blood on the Snow alongside these Snowlands in our mana base, so we can pick these back up on occasion in addition to control the board. So let's go ahead and dive on into some games with this and uh, see how it feels this morning. I don't know what the new Skeleton Lord does, so I'm gonna go out on a limb and assume it's unplayable garbage. I will, I will say that this card is just an individually reasonable card on its own, and you don't need to play bad cards alongside it to make it better. I'm gonna go ahead and do this and hunt for specimens and just grab an Environmental Sciences out of the board. We're gonna hit our land drops. Did Watsy ever say why this is only best of one? Uh, yeah, it's only ever best of one. Best of best of one is more popular on Magic Arena than best of three. Because most people play Magic very casually, and Best of One's a much better casual format. I'm gonna attack with these. If they want to trade this for both my things, I get a treasure token and then can play Skeletal Swarming next turn. Yeah, the card, that card's a 4 mana 2-2. Two, two. in the mascot exhibition here. Your ramp spell drawing you a ramp payoff is kind of great. Good. Hey, fish lamp. It's exciting. So if I attack both of these into here and then play swarming. I need answers, not more problems. Actually, I'm gonna play this tab so we have the option to mascot exhibition next turn potentially. Focus. Got a job to do. Get out. 
Okay, so will Professor... That's Professor Honest. It was make them the sacrifice way. that, send these into... Here to kill this. Leaving this back so we can have Faceless Haven not kill this, potentially. Vanishing Verse seems like a pretty big leg up here. Letting them exile our thing is good. Necrotic Fumes is a great pull, though. My motivation's withered. Um, the current standard 22 format is good enough that I am willing to play best of one to get to play it. It's probably one of the best, best recommendations I can give in terms of a format. Vanishing Verse is the best two mana removal spell in the format. It's not not particularly close. Opponent's deck almost assuredly has plenty of sweepers in it. Probably three to four blood in the snow, so I'm not just running the mascot exhibition out there. Our own blood on the snow, not having anything in our bin because they exiled our planeswalkers. Feels pretty bad. Deadly Dispute's a nice pickup. Try and get some velocity going here. Morning Avenger. Historic is fine. Historic is in a spot at this very instance where it's just uh, kind of in an in-between point. Like, it's a, it's a dead format currently. And what I mean by that is we know change is coming with a big change is coming with this upcoming historic horizon. So like the current format is like kind of low on my my desires to play. The channel the channel's probably gonna have not even probably we're definitely going to have a big focus on standard 22 here for the next two weeks while we wait for the historic horizons to happen. Because it feels, it feels kind of like a waste to, feels kind of like a waste to like put a bunch of time into Historic right now when there's a big change coming.
Yeah, I, I, Aether Vial sneaking into Historic Horizon sounds great. And I think we're just dead here. The opponent's deck is just gonna solidly outgrind us. Their, their Kayas are just much better than what we're doing. Honestly, the number of sweepers this deck is playing is probably wrong. I'm gonna cut the Shadows Verdicts. Go up a Blood on the Snow. And obviously, they would go up a Liliana. Just add another threat at the top end. Thanks for the, t the two years. Fear Burger, welcome back. Good morning, good morning. Right on time, tap land. Welcome to the party. I guess we'll just do this. We have something to do next turn. Arxis, thanks for the follow. Welcome to the channel. Uh, what format, Avenger? Would be would be my question to you. Do this now while they're tapped out, so I don't get counterspelled off my draw two. historic uh i don't know like i like i just said i'm not super high on historic when we're waiting for when we know a big change is coming so like investing i feel like any investment i put really into historic right now has really low returns because anything i work on or information i try to learn is going to be tossed out the window when august 12th gets here There isn't, there isn't a strong incentive to, like, invest resources. Like, I was going to take the time to update my website deck list after um, Brainstorm got suspended, but I'm just going to leave them outdated for a couple of weeks so there's a big change coming. And I'll, I'll invest some time overhauling what's up there after things settle a little bit with Historic Horizons. August, August 12th is Historic Horizons. The standard rotation is in the end of September for the next regular set. Yikes. What are spells? Baby, don't hurt me. Don't hurt me no more. Eris Move, thanks for the 27 months. Welcome back. Yes, that is that is exactly why Brainstorm is a good band confidant. Both Phoenix and Jeskai Control are both still very good and historic. Big, big agree.
When you can knock the best decks in the format down a peg and still have them be playable and good, it's a great thing to do to knock them down a peg. Thanks for all the support, Chad. I appreciate the nine months. Welcome back. Whenever, whenever there's a deck that's a clear best deck in a format, or best decks, and you can make them slightly worse with the format change, but still allow them to be playable and powerful, I think it is always correct to make that small change. De decreasing the power level of the top of a format is the best way you can make the format wider open because it allows decks of a wider power level to be competitive underneath those top decks. All right, chat. It's time to jam. Welcome to the slam. So far, so far, this deck doesn't seem particularly good. I'm getting very clunked up in a lot of these games. Feels feels kind of like a worse version of the black-white mid-range control deck that we had played previously in the standard 22 format. This might be one we don't stick on for particularly long. This is the part where they attack with both of these, and then they take an extra turn and we die. I assume is how this story goes. Huh. Weird. Weird. Hey, chat. This is bait. They didn't take an extra turn last turn, so I assume there's multiple counter spells up here and this just doesn't matter. That'll do, pig. That'll do. Yeah, that sounds good. Nice. I think we're in for sciences here. Digo Fraga, thanks for the follow. No, you just board the sweepers out against the deck full of counter spells. So it's like not a not a big deal. You need the you need the sweepers in your main deck to deal with the with the aggressive decks. So you just board them out against the control decks.
Do I want to swarming? I don't think so. I'm just going to fire this up and crack them for... Crack them for four. And then we can block Deadly Dispute, draw a couple, and then Blood of the Snow the following turn. Each player gains that much life, sure. I guess I could have deadly disputed first and then done this. I would have given us the extra skeleton. Reduced to memory, gross. No problem, Beansy. It wasn't a big deal. Discord's got good controls. I think it's really hard to predict what Wizards of the Coast will do with their various things because they're not particularly consistent in the way in which they execute. They execute what they're doing, at least not from the outside. Maybe, maybe their metrics are consistent from the inside if you have all the information they do, but from the outside there's not a lot of consistency. These are both clerics, huh? It's kind of sweet. Nice. Yeah, I was I was actually just going to say like I like Magic more as a game than Rune Terra, but Riot's ability to communicate with their player base efficiently is just like second to none. They don't they don't leave you out in the cold wondering what's uh what's going on and what's gonna happen with things. I think I'm gonna deadly dispute here and dig for a way to kill this before it can draw them cards potentially. Well, eh. Their, their very clear roadmaps of what they're working on and about when they expect to release it are much better. Uh, I don't know that I'm going to do daily spoiler videos, but maybe every other day or so. Like, we, if you look on the YouTube channel, I already posted... I already posted one for some of the stuff from yesterday. So if I attack in and kill a bunch of their stuff, this is going to get bigger and they're going to draw a bunch of cards. Doesn't seem great for me. I think, I think I'm just doing this and like kind of chilling until we can find a way to take the hope off the table.
Mythic, uh, I don't know who did the Mythic spoiler link, but Mythic spoiler is not a good... Mythic spoiler does not have... Does not have most of the spoilers up there. I'm missing a significant amount of them. Battiel, thanks for the follow. Welcome to the channel. They are missing many things. Usually they're the go-to, but they don't seem to be on the ball for this arena release. All right, Professor. Three shots at a removal spell. Morning, Neonovic. Thanks for the follow. Perfect. And this, if you if you squint, chat, this is a removal spell. I love this board so much. The music underscore for it is great too. It's for the follow Neonovic. Good morning. money all right so they're gonna reduce her to ash do I want to draw a card or do I want to I think I just want to kill their creature here and then we'll smack them with faceless haven and we'll play mascot exhibition drain them for two Even if they have Doomscar here, I have enough snow mana that uh, these Faceless Havens finish them. Finish them. Wait. So these are eight. Do I have 14 mana? This is four... Five, six, and then, yeah, okay. So I have lethal here. Not quite as good as my almond cat, so I'm gonna leave my kitty on. Kill Jaden, thanks for the follow. Good morning and welcome to the channel. Yeah, this is fine. We can go like tapped land into gas tapped land into field trip into Lulith.
Let's make a command for Historic because people keep asking. Historic has a large shakeup coming on August 12th, so Jeff is putting the format on the back burner for a bit. Until then, rather than investing a lot of time into the format about to change. So, I've got a donation deck that we're going to be playing today as our second, our second arena deck after this one. But outside of donation decks, I don't think I personally am going to be picking historic decks to play on stream until August 12th gets here. Is my, is my loose plan. Black red on the other side. Just mascot exhibition as always. Which I raised yesterday, including um, the including the thousand dollar match that Christy, Christy and I did. Um, we raised uh, just over fifty five hundred dollars for No Kid Hungry yesterday. Nah, it's really not a big deal, Crumbish. I probably should have made a command before you. You were like the fifth or sixth person to uh, to ask that very reasonable question. I'm not. I'm not upset that I had to make a command. I would just much rather have a command than constantly repeat myself. I just don't. I don't want people at home to have to listen to me repeat myself constantly all all day. The Griefer conceded when they had two cards left in their deck, which is really funny. I think I'm allergic to Skullport Merchants, chap. So, I could play Liliana. But if I play Liliana and they draw an untapped snow land, they kill her with the Faceless Haven. So I think I lead on the Exhibition here so I can play her out behind behind a wall a bit. Whack. Thanks for the 11 months. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Teamer mid-range and cons block. Ugh. What, what are the odds they sneak us a Savage Knuckle Blade in Historic Horizons, El Pablo? The things, the things I would do for a savage knuckle buster chat. Closet pan, thanks for the 16 months. <sighs> Alright, I think I take the swamp over the faceless haven here, because I'd like to play shambling gast out this turn. I don't know how much the other streamers raise. So the uh, charity relay thing is actually still going on for like the next day and a half. And it looks like in total, they have raised um, almost $17,000 between everybody, which is pretty awesome. My motivation's withered. It would be an incredible punt on Wizards of the Coast part if they don't have multiple sliver decks in this upcoming release. <clears throat> if there aren't if there aren't enough slivers in this Historic Horizon set to have slivers of a supported archetype, they're really messing up. Slivers, slivers are an easy fan favorite, so hopefully they figure out that they should be supporting that. Well, we definitely have some slivers, but so far the first batch that we got spoiled yesterday are not enough to make the archetype competitive and historic, I don't think. So hopefully, hopefully we're going to get some more colors of slivers.
Can we just, like, kill this and pressure them here? No, unfortunately, the card acquisition for this upcoming Historic Horizons is only jumpstart packs that you have to play the weird game mode to have access to. The card card acquisition for this upcoming set leaves a lot to be desired. On well, their blocks here are actually pretty mediocre, so I get to go ahead and do this to kill the skull port now. I guess they get to kill my 3-2, but this still seems like a good exchange for me overall. They have a Blood on the Snow coming up here. I'm just going to pass in case they do. <clears throat> Man, that's super unfortunate. <clears throat> this is our second time playing into this archetype that this opponent's playing. And we've gotten pretty dismantled by it both times now. I guess we're not super far behind here because I have this, but like... Ka Kaya's and... Um, all my Planeswalkers are exiled too, right? Yeah, Kaya's and Vanishing Versus have been giving us a run for our money. Ninty Scout, thanks for the quarter of year. I appreciate that. Welcome back. So, one thing I will say, and I don't want this to be interpreted as me defending Wizard's highly predatory monetization structure, because Magic Arena definitely has a highly predatory monetization structure. But I do think it's weird that the way in which players approach estimating what the price of arena is and what the price of paper magic is seem to be very, very different things in my experience. And what I mean by that is when people talk about the cost of paper magic or even moto, they frequently look at it from the perspective of this is what it costs me to build one deck. Whereas on arena... It see, people always seem to look at it from the perspective of what does it cost me to own absolutely everything? And that that psychological difference, yeah, is is really weird to me. Because, like, yeah, like, someone like me, who's a content creator, who makes my living doing this, and it's beneficial for me to have everything, I'm probably going to spend four or five hundred bucks acquiring everything from Historic Horizons. Um, but, like, you know, if I was playing Arena just as, like, a hobby, like I played Magic for forever, I'd probably have three or four decks and call it a day, right? You can build a single deck on Arena for 50 bucks. That's definitely not true. <clears throat> In my large amount of experience putting lots of money into Magic Arena, if you're starting with an empty account, the average deck costs somewhere between $100 and $150 to build. Sometimes as much as $200 to build, depending on what the exact composition of the deck you're looking to build is.
one of one of the features of the magic arena economy is that let's call it a feature um i mean they have four cards in hand and five mana here so they could have a removal spell but otherwise they're dead um is that the more cards you incidentally buy the cheaper it gets to buy future cards right and that's one of the ways they encourage people to keep investing, right? Because when you when you go like, you know, when you say it's $150 for my first deck. Oh, oh, but now it's only $100 for the second deck. Oh, and oh, and then it's only $80 for the third deck. And if I was in for the first deck for $150 and the second deck for $100, I mean, the third deck for $80 is a steal, right? So, Nude Avenger, your comment there shows a fundamental misunderstanding of the mobile game landscape and the psychology with which it drives people to make decisions via microtransactions. So, you're right. Let's just think these subs real quick here. Hedon, thank you for the 14 months. And Bizarre Trader, thanks for the brand new sub. Welcome to the channel. So, you're right that Legends of Rune Terra. Legends of Runeterra has the most consumer-friendly digital card game card acquisition model out there. And for those that aren't familiar with Runeterra, there's no loot boxes. You buy exactly the cards you want. It costs you at most $3 for a single copy of a card. They range from $0.10 cents to 3 bucks. But you're saying, um, Nude Avenger, if Arena is looking to go digital, they should make those changes as well. Arena is already one of the most profitable games out there in terms of digital card games. And Runeterra doesn't even crack the top 10 list. And there's a reason for that. Like, you and I, the consumer, would be happier if they used Runeterra's system. But, like, they know what they're doing. They're making way more money doing what they're doing. Elwins, thank you for the 41 months. Welcome back. Rune, Rune Terra is late to market, is the is the, the cold, honest truth. And when you are late to market, you have to make yourself more appealing in order to acquire users. Magic gets to be more expensive and predatory and still have an endless user base because it's existed for 30 years and it has the base already. Ty Phenom and Captain Sam, thanks for the follows. Welcome to the channel. I think they would reinvest in their infrastructure. They do invest in the parts of the infrastructure that make sense and make money. Like, like it's not, it's not the answer that a lot of people want to hear. But like, whenever there's an esports person complaining about the lack of spectator mode or stuff like that in arena. The blunt truth is, those things don't make money, and they're complicated to write, and it's not a good investment on Wizards' parts to put resources into them. Like, I know it's like a meme to like make fun of Wizards and like act like they don't know what they're doing, but trust me, they have lots of people that run lots of stats on these things. They're doing they're doing what they're doing for a reason. The reason why we're getting Historic Horizons and they pivoted off of Pioneer is because they realized it's probably more profitable for them to do that. Yeah, I think we're probably just going to get buried by the Tusky here. <laughs> I mean, so, realistically, Silence, that also doesn't matter. So, like, people, while there's some truth to the, you know, your strongest power as a consumer to drive changes to stop doing something, magic is a giant boulder rolling down a mountain, and a bunch of people jumping up to try and stop the boulder from rolling down the mountain isn't going to change the behavior at the end of the day. 
Yes, magic. Magic's too big to fail. All of all of the there's you know there's it goes back to you know there's no ethical consumption under capitalism. At the end of the day, just play the games that you enjoy. And let it let it be. So this ain't pretty slow. We're on the play, so I'm gonna yolo it. Yes, there is a good I I would assume that they've known about Historic Horizons for six months or more now. They've known it's coming. Which, again, going... One thing that I think could be a reasonable request that I wish would happen is I just wish Wizards would communicate timelines to us better. It would be nice if we knew these things were happening three months ago and not three weeks before it releases. That would be that would be my one thing that I would I would really like. All right, so that is decent. It gives us a play for the turn and it grabs us environmental sciences to fish up a fourth land with next turn. Is there concern that the earlier announcements will cause longer lame duck periods in the format? Not any more than normal set releases cause that cooldown, Max. So that's like saying they shouldn't announce set releases at all and they should just surprise us when they're around the corner, right? Com competitive historic will never exist in paper. That being said, unless something's super crazy coming down the pipeline, and there could be something super crazy coming down the pipeline, I have yet to see a single digital only card that you couldn't play in paper as a proxy with your friends. A lot of these digital only designs they've been putting forth aren't even really you can only do this in digital so much as uh, these would be tedious to track in paper and difficult, so we're not going to do it there for logistic purposes. Most most of these are, if you wanted... Yeah, yeah, like that's, that's honestly a, a, the best way to put it, Silence. A, a lot of these are, could just be silver-bordered cards. How do you how do you seek? You just reveal cards from the top of your deck, and then you shuffle the rest back in. You work it like abundant harvest, or you put them on the bottom of your deck. You don't need a third person to do the seek cards. You just reveal cards off your deck, and then you until you find the one, and then put them on the bottom. Yeah, it's it's effectively a cascade, is ex is exactly what it is. <clears throat> no, you don't even have a seek board dream that changes it. Yeah, this is this is definitely a distraction, Planeswalker. And also, if they kill her, we get to blood on the snow her back next turn, which is perfect. They're supposed to be in the same order without shuffling. Listen, you pedantic magic player. You're correct that actually, Jeff, they need to stay in the same order and you're not supposed to shuffle your deck. But functionally, come on, fuck off. Like, you know that functionally it's the same thing in most cases, right? You're just arguing this actually technically position to be pedantic about it. It largely does not matter. In fact, if you, if you wanted to be really technical about it, you could just keep track of how many cards you scry to the bottom of your deck and you could just shuffle the cards that weren't explicitly scryed to the bottom and just shuffle everything else. That that would be a legal way to keep track of it. That would be a little bit tedious. Because again, it's not really this has to be digital only. It's a, uh, this is a little tedious to do in paper, so we're not going to do it in paper. My children 
drench their hands in the blood of my enemies. Yes, seek is the very mildest of change from exile from your library until you find. Is exactly, exactly correct. Correct. And again, like, this would be casual play. This is like, if you wanted to play these cards with your friends in paper because you think they're sweet. And a lot of them are sweet, so like, go nuts. Chef Seth, thank you for the 40 months. Welcome back. Ian Sekian, thanks for the, thanks to re and Welcome back. Yes, that, that's actually the truth right there. What Silence said. A lot of these digital cards are simply getting rid of information that would have to be public in order to ensure people aren't cheating. That's, that's what these digital designs are largely doing. Oh, do they not have... They don't have indestructible deal. Well, you are still going to kill my planeswalker. All right, deal. I think they blizzard brawled because they didn't realize they didn't have three snowlands. And I, we talked about this during yesterday's stream too. But I actually think a really sweet thing they should do is they should take these digital only cards and they should print them as a silver bordered box set and sell them via secret layer or whatever other mechanic they want. So that way people who want to play with them casually in paper with their friends can do that with an official magic product if they don't want to make proxies. I think, I think something like that would likely be successful. You don't, you don't even need to like make a whole unset. You literally just like, okay, here's the digital only cards and silver borders. You can't play them in sanctioned events, but you want to play historic for fun at home? Like go nuts. You want to play them in your commander decks with your friends? Go nuts. Right on, right on time, one drop. Welcome to the party. So we're gonna hunt for specimens here. I think I'm starting with pest summoning as chump blockers. Maybe it was right to grab the exile a thing spell. I'm gonna shambling nast and then we'll deadly dispute here. I'll give us six mana for next turn. pretty scary. All right, so we got three shots of the blood on the snow here. Yikes. Alright, what are we what are we doing? How do we stem the bleeding? We can like spend five mana with the hunt the specimens. We could run back the distraction planeswalker. I think I like Distraction Planeswalker too. You require my a gift in exchange for loyalty. Never play flip it or rip it. No, when I gamble, I usually play poker or blackjack.
Yeah, or or magic online. Yikes. All right. I think we're going to move on from this one. I'm going to post this one to YouTube. Even though I'm not... It wasn't particularly good. Because I think it's a good one to, like, point to reference to from a... I feel like there were things in here I wanted to try. And it felt like... There were some decent misses here. So, at the core, Skeletal Swarming sw felt really slow and clunky as a control finisher. And I feel like if I were to try this again, I would want to put it in a more linear deck rather than something that's trying to be interactive around it. The, there's a little bit of, like, anti-synergy with this card alongside the Planeswalkers. Also, like, being in this kind of controlling shell while not being in white felt really bad. Perhaps you could play Binding and Field Trip and still play things like um, Kaya and uh, Vanishing Verse and be Abzan, but a lot of what this deck was doing definitely felt like a worse version of the black-white mid-range controlling deck that we had played we had played a bit of, so I think I would definitely recommend doing that instead if you wanted to play this shell. And maybe we'll try we'll try a different shell with this at a later date, but this one definitely felt like a miss for me. Zero, thank you for the two and a half years. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Damod, thanks for the four months. I appreciate the third of a year. All right, let's shift gears to some